what are 11 tips for simple keto that you can use to lose major weight? Hey folks, my name's Allie, let's get started. So you may know already that I've lost major weight going keto and I really did it following um, a set of simple rules to keep things really simple um, so that it wasn't overcomplicated and that it fit my lifestyle. So if you're looking to lose some weight and you want to keep it simple and budget friendly, here are 11 tips for you. These are just some things that I learned along the way and I'm sure that even if you're not measuring and just doing lazy keto that you would definitely still see major weight loss. The first tip is to focus mostly on meats and vegetables and not fat. Remember, although we call keto a high fat, low carb diet, it's not really about the high fat, maybe unless you're trying to maintain. But if you're trying to lose weight, you definitely want your body to eat the fat off of you, which means it's going to consume it, but you don't have to eat it. And if you want more info on fat intake and weight loss, watch my Do Calories Matter video down below. So if you're focusing on meat and vegetables, definitely avoid all the things that we don't do on keto, like breads, pastas, sweets, um, candies, cakes, and starchy vegetables like potatoes and sweet potatoes. If you're even just eating your regular meals but cutting out those breads and the french fries and you know the filler foods, then you're definitely going to be eating less overall. So even if you're not measuring, you're probably still going to lose lots of weight. Okay, my second tip, please focus on eating real foods, real whole natural foods. You do not have to go buy special ingredients. If you want to keep the keto diet simple and budget friendly for you, focus on the outer perimeter of the grocery store. Look at the vegetables, look at the meats, and look at the dairy and things that you can eat there. Um, but no, you do not have to add ketones. You do not have to take keto supplements. Those are things that you might pay for, but your body can do it on its own. So you can save money, you can save time, and you're gonna save probably on calories too if you're not adding all of these ingredients into your food. So eat natural, eat whole foods. If you're just starting out on keto, I would recommend stick to your routine that you already know. Um, if you're used to eating three meals a day, just replace those meals with keto foods or cut out the non-keto foods like the breads and things. Um, but I would not recommend just starting out um, going you know, crazy on everything. So just work on switching out your foods. If you're used to eating free meals, I wouldn't really recommend starting intermittent fasting or anything like that. I would say get used to the foods first, see how you like it, see what works for you, what doesn't. And then if you wanna change things along the way, then maybe look at other methods to do keto. So if you're used to eating breakfast, switch out your cereal for eggs or bacon or both. Um, and so yeah, just get used to subbing in those foods and get used to eating this higher fat diet um, before you try and switch too many things because it might drive you crazy. My fourth tip to keep keto simple is to meal plan before you go shopping. Write down everything that you're going to eat. I like to shop once a week. For me, it's simple. It's easy. Um, I eat all the food that I buy. There is no food waste because I get it every week and I get just enough for what I need. Um, and I think it helps me keep to my budget more. Instead of buying, you know, all this food at once, um, maybe something will go bad or maybe I'll change my mind about what I want. So I would say definitely try and stick to a schedule to go shopping and then meal plan. Um, if you want to hear more about meal planning, I have a Keto 101 series in which I talked about that and I'll link it down below too. But definitely write down what you want to eat before you go shopping, no matter when you go shopping. And it'll definitely help you budget wise and temptation wise because all you got to do is stick to your list. And if you don't diverge from that, then you're going to be on track. My fifth tip for simple keto weight loss is to focus on those leaner meats. I'm talking fish, I'm talking chicken breast or pork loin, and I say that because calories do matter if you're looking to lose weight. A lot of people lose weight naturally without even counting anything on keto because they are cutting out starchy foods that they're not eating and they're replacing with vegetables or less caloric foods. So they might lose it naturally without having to track. But if you really want to make sure that you're going to lose weight simply, focus on leaner meats. Sure, you can indulge on those fattier meats like steak or ribs or chicken wings or things like that once in a while, but definitely day to day focus on lean meats. My number six tip is to get a digital kitchen scale. Now, even if you're doing lazy keto or super simple keto where you're not really tracking anything in a food log, it's definitely useful to know exactly how much you're eating and what a portion size looks like. Because I'll tell you, I was surprised and I'm still a little disappointed that a handful of nuts of almonds or pecans is a lot smaller than I'd like for it to be. So if I don't measure it out, I'm probably going to overeat on foods like that. And that's just in my experience. 
So even if you're not logging anything in a food log app or anything like that or a journal, it's definitely worthwhile to see exactly what a serving size looks like um, so that you can be more conscious of what you're putting in your mouth. Number seven, drink more water. If you think you're hungry but you're not really feeling that empty achiness in your stomach, I would say, you know, take a breather from the fridge, you know, get a glass of water, a bottle of water, whatever, sit down for a bit and just sip on the water. In my experience around 10.30 when I'm at work, you know, a couple hours before lunch, I notice I get kind of like a hunger feeling and then I realize, oh, my throat's dry, my lips are dry, my mouth's dry, and then I take a few chugs of water and I feel a lot better. So definitely, please don't confuse uh, dehydration with hunger. Um, try and drink some water first. It doesn't even have to be water. You know, it could be coffee or tea or I'm not even against diet soda. If you need a diet soda, I would say try that before you eat something. Number eight, find some basic keto snacks that you can keep on hand day to day that you enjoy. So for me, I love cheese. It can be string cheese or blue cheese or fancy cheese, whatever. Um, as long as I have cheese, I know that I've got a good snack waiting for me if I feel a little hungry. Also good options are raw veggies. I mean, I've just really gotten into celery lately. Also raw green beans for me, I love those. And even right now, sometimes I'm just taking like a scoop of guacamole and it's just, it's hitting that spot where I need a snack and it's really good. So find things that you like that you can have on hand that you can just kind of snack on if you do actually get a little hungry. Now number nine is for all those people that when it's the weekend, they find that they might eat a little bit, especially at nighttime. So my number nine tip is to go to bed. I can be such a late night snacker, especially on a Friday or a Saturday, you know, I've been maybe not tracking everything all day and then I'm just, well, you know, I haven't tracked all day, I'll just snack here on some pecans. Um, but that little handful of pecans can definitely balloon into like 800 calories worth of pecans. So if you are staying up later than you need to be, or maybe it's the weekend and you're staying up later than you usually do during the week, I would say go to bed. I will promise you, if you go to bed when you think that you're hungry, right, you have that head hungry feeling and not that stomach hungry feeling, if you go to bed, I bet you in the morning you won't be that hungry. Number 10, so I've mentioned it a couple times throughout this video, but I think that we need to differentiate between head hunger and stomach hunger. Stomach hunger is that actual hunger that you'll feel if you haven't eaten in a while. It's that empty, achy feeling, maybe your stomach's rumbling a little bit, um, but that's differentiated from head hunger, which I'm just calling it that because I don't know if there's another word for it, but head hunger is what I will describe as just that feeling that you need to eat, but you don't know why, or maybe you're not really feeling stomach hungry. So maybe it's just you have, maybe you have a headache, maybe you're tired, maybe you're a little sad, maybe you just want to feel good. That's what I'm calling head hungry. So if you can differentiate between stomach hunger and head hunger, I think that'll help you realize when you actually need to eat food. Number 11, my final tip for keeping any type of diet simple is to find out what your needs are. If you're a grazer and your issues uh, based on eating throughout the day, you know, little amounts here or there, focus on eating, you know, lighter calorie keto foods like raw vegetables. If you're a binger who likes to binge on carby foods, yeah, keto should definitely help you because you can't eat those foods anymore. If you're an emotional eater, try and differentiate between the head hunger and the stomach hunger and try and figure out what your triggers are. For me, I want to binge when I'm tired or when I'm a little sad or even when I want to celebrate. So it can be a very emotional experience for me when it comes to food. Well, folks, that's about it for today. Those are just my 11 tips to try and keep the ketogenic diet simple. And really, they would actually apply to pretty much most diets that aren't, you know, non-meat diets. So I hope you enjoyed. I am going to try and go live here soon in the next week or so. So if you want to get a notification for that, make sure to press the bell. Um, that should push a notification towards your device so that you don't miss my live sessions. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to find me on Instagram, my name is Keto underscore Allie. On Instagram, I like to post about what I'm eating or just things that are going on in my life. Also, I have a blog. It's AllieMcLowey.com. And you can find me on Facebook as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye. So I might try and just answer some questions that I see. Um, at the end of these videos. So this is one that I got on Instagram and it's from Anne Marie. And she said she's a keto from Europe and she was wondering if she could have dry red wine. So definitely you can have dry wine, red or white. Um, I like Merlot or Cabernet or Pinot Noir. And I also really like Chardonnay for white wine, um, especially since it's summertime. So the thing about keto is that our tolerance is lower when it comes to alcohol. So it definitely doesn't take as much to feel a little buzz.
Whenever I try and look up nutrition, and I've tried several times, but I always come about the same information that I find. Um, five ounces of wine, and that comes out to 150 grams. I've measured it. I've measured it in a measuring cup, and I've put it on my gram scale. About 145 to 150 grams of wine. Um, that comes out to 125 calories, about, and about three to four. I usually use four grams of carbs. So, I mean, if you can fit it in your day's macros and your calories, I say go for it. Um, just remember, it will affect you a little bit more because you're on keto. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.